How does the daughter of a naval officer and a JNU professor end up in the movies? It's a question that I often ask myself. With some regret? Uh, no, no regrets. A fairly polite and diplomatic mm. person. Con contrary to my Twitter uh, uh, <laughs> image and persona, I'm actually very non-confrontational. Mm. Um, I only fight with my parents and now husband. I think when I went to Bombay, I was fresh out of JNU. I just finished my masters and uh, you know, I, I studied my B in Miranda House, very sort of radically feminist department we had in English honors and great teachers and opened my eyes and my brain to like a whole new world. Same with JNU. Uh, in JNU, I was involved with IPTA also. So, you know, we were very like, and I think we were very self-consciously, at least I was very self-consciously intellectual. You know, I think that because I developed this sort of image of being too political, too controversial, um, and uh, the, and there's so much sort of um, organized, sponsored, kind of trolling. deliberate trolling, and you know, that kind of thing with everything I do, that I think that producers get very, very nervous. I like Rahul Gandhi. I, I, I like, and I like him more and more um, in the last, I would say, since 2017, 18. Would you contest so, the election? Eventually in my life, yes, maybe, 100%. Tell me about Kangana. What about Kangana? No, and I mean, I didn't pause dramatically so you could have <laughs> dramatically as And a then give up. <laughs> Context uh, for our audience, she called you a B grade. Me and Tapsi. You and Tapsi, yes. Kind of flattering that she remembered us in a whole host of. How does the daughter of a naval officer and a JNU professor end up in the movies? It's a question that I often ask myself. With some regret? Uh, no, no regrets. I don't believe in regrets. I, I think that I'm very grateful and blessed and I've had a really wholesome journey and I've had a very, um, I think I, I have lots to feel thankful for. So no, no regrets at all. But yes, I feel and increasingly I feel in the last few years, I do feel like my personality and just you know, everything that I am, uh, it's maybe the wrong kind of fit for showbiz or glamour because I think that there is, uh, and this is not, I, I'm, I think I'm fairly competent as an actor, so it's not, mm. it's not my um, craft, but I think just in terms of soul and personality, I think that sometimes I wish like I just sometimes feel like maybe if I had a different personality or if I was a different person, I'd have had a slightly easier time just for myself. Like what? Like, like what would you, suppose you were more diplomatic, less political? I, I think it would, it would have helped a lot if I was a little more silent and not so, um, I'm quite diplomatic. I cannot think that anyone has had a very bad experience of interacting with me. I'm a fairly polite and diplomatic mm. person. Con contrary to my Twitter uh, uh, <laughs> image and persona, I'm actually very non-confrontational. Mm. Um, I only fight with my parents and now husband and brother. And rarely with some friends, friends yeah. or anyone. Uh, but uh, no, I think that... Uh, yeah, I think that... I, I think I feel too passionately and then feel the need to express that and do something about it or like you know or, mm. or feel like I am doing something not that one is necessarily doing anything and I think that in general maybe if you just you know stuck to your own lane in showbiz mm. then maybe it would be just easier it's probably more convenient everywhere in the world but, to but just you stick know, to your own lane aside of like expressing too much let's come to other things that I'm trying to wrap my head around right so I think I read somewhere uh, that one of the things you struggled with initially, it was not financial struggle. The struggle was how do you go from being the girl who sat at the back of the class and, you know, made fun of sort of the other girls or the kind of people who cared too much about how they looked. Yeah. And now you had to be this person constantly, you know. <laughs> 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 right? Uh, how do you, 
how do you make an adjustment with how you yourself have had to change i mean i learned and i grew and i became you know i i i think when i went to bombay i was fresh out of jnu i just finished my masters and uh, you know i i studied my bn miranda house very sort of radically feminist department we had in english honors and great teachers and opened my eyes and my brain to like a whole new world same with jnu uh in jnu i was involved with ipta also so you know we were very like and i think we were very self consciously at least i was very self consciously intellectual and i know, left uh, and left of center uh, left of center but despite, but despite being a military man's daughter it's not it's not i mean forgeries are my favorite i cut my teeth covering you know the forge but the the military is not is socially progressive but is yeah. set to right on national security which i think your dad would still be I, think, I don't know how you would define himself but I'm making a guess. I don't know. I think now all I think the current times we live in all labels have kind of changed. Yeah. But yeah, definitely I think that when my uh, in earlier times my father would be uh, described as a hawk. Yeah. I think that was the word, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I I my parents are both very liberal. So they never uh, I don't think they ever sort of imposed their opinions on us and we had a very um, sort of healthy kind of conversation back home. there was you know there was always room for disagreement i know my father and i have actually disagreed on israel palestine and i've slowly mm. tried to bring him to i was just Palestinian I, perspective. I, i was just going to ask uh, like what are the kind of arguments you had growing up yeah so israel palestine after i discovered what that whole issue was was yeah. would often yeah. be a debate and uh, but i think that uh, yeah i mean i think i learned and i think that i had a bit of a chip on my shoulder when i went to bollywood and i was a little bit not arrogant but i think i was a little bit like intellectually a little maybe snobbish yeah and i kind of you know i kind of a little bit looked down on glamour and then it was actually my mother who is the most no makeup using person in the world who has lived in a saree and kajal and yeah. kumkum bindi her whole life um she is the one who actually one day told me when i was scribbing she was like why do you keep complaining about this this is the rules of the world that you want to succeed in so why don't you just play the game by the rules until you reach a place where what you're saying matters to someone yeah and it made a lot of sense to me and she kind of said stop whining it's yeah. fine this is what it is just do it every yeah. field has its own it's an extension rules. of the job yeah. it's a part of the job you don't yeah. like but you do it because there are other things yeah, that you yeah everything like. can, cannot be but, like but an you, issue you open by saying that you have started really questioning whether you're the right fit for this industry i mean i'm definitely not let's let's well like i know that I have, i'm the wrong personality what would you have been if you weren't an actor i wanted to be a teacher Okay. I wanted to be but I couldn't decide first whether I want to be a school teacher or like a college lecturer like my mom. But I was never very um like I had lots of options. I, I mean I was studying for my GRE to go and apply for a PhD program in the US in anthropology like all my classmates were doing. And uh, I was a fairly bright student. I you know was pretty confident in my uh essays and in all the work that we had to do. So yeah, I mean I I that's the, i i think i was thinking of following my mother's footsteps so yeah. a different version of my mother yeah. with maybe a little more activism or like the teachers that i looked up yeah. to but i think that um i think i was always so much of a notanki <laughs> and so much of a drama was like i loved an audience my whole life like from when i was a kid yeah. and i think my my dad was actually the first one who recognized that he used to call me isdora duncan <laughs> uh, uh and uh, of course i didn't know who that was but yeah. he would always say she was a you know, big performer and you know yeah. uh so i think that i i kind of Yeah, I mean I was going to end up in front of the camera one way or the other. I think I only wanted to be a teacher because you have a captive audience of like 40 students in are class. You, are you are you planning to stay with the choice you've made or are you having second thoughts at this inflection point of sorts, right? Marriage, baby. Uh it's one set of it. I'm not saying I I would ask the same question of a man by the way. I I have to clarify that as a feminist. But it is an inflection point of sorts, right? I I don't think the marriage and the baby are uh, is a, so much of an inflection point for me as the fact that i think that they you know i think that because i developed this sort of image of being too political too controversial um and uh, they, and there's so much sort of um organized sponsored kind of trolling. deliberate trolling and you know that kind of thing with everything i do that i think that producers get very very nervous and i think that that 
that image of being controversial and of being a dissenter or you know anti government uh, i'm using the words that yeah yeah they I've heard people it. use yeah, yeah. um i think that that is what is creating an inflection moment for me more than my personal life so let me put it to you like this let's imagine um the congress i named the congress because you walked in the bharat jodo yatra yeah i could name some other party also so i'm just naming the congress hypothetically let's say the congress were to come to you before the 2024 elections and say swara since you are pro political clearly why don't you channel that into formal electoral politics would politics be a possible professional option for you i don't know i get asked that a lot and um I used to earlier be like no I don't know I mean no not at all I don't think so but now I genuinely don't know uh but I will say that like I feel like for me politics is not just electoral politics and just standing in an election and so on I believe that you know I, I mean I come from that school of thought which believes that everything you do is political especially as an artist art is actually very political of course so I I do believe that you know politics is not just electoral politics i come from that school of thought that very much believes you know it's that traditional feminist sort of thing that the personal is the political sure. as a progressive person i feel art is political so i think that for me um politics doesn't have to be necessarily limited to electoral politics so whether i do get into electoral politics or not it doesn't matter because i know i will find a way to be doing the kind of politics of i believe course, in anyway so everything that we say do is political at in its deepest way yeah. but i'm asking the question because i'm juxtaposing it with your inflection point where you believe that because of this sort of politics you today don't get as much work as you'd like is that a fair yeah 100% is that a fair thing to say 100% but i feel like that's fine i mean i i chose to walk a path and i I knew that there would be some kind of price that one would have to pay. That's not to say that it doesn't pinch because you know you can say that oh I'm going to die for a cause and I'll mm -hmm. take a bullet for this cause but when the bullet hits you it's still going to hurt. Of course. So of course it pinches you and as I always say I think my greatest hesitation to to actually even uh examining this question of whether I join electoral politics honestly to myself is that I'm scared because I love acting. I mean that's my passion. Mm -hmm. and to the politics is a kind, kind i know i know i know kind of theater i know that the best actors these yes, days are, are yes, politicians yes, everywhere in the world yes. but i kind of feel sad because it makes me feel like i'll then i'll definitely not be in front of the camera as a film actor anymore uh, so i think that's my great hesitation to, to be very honest both. to answer this you question you could do both we when we when had, had not full time electoral no politics. female politician has been able to do that yes parish rawal sir and he's i mean in the hindi film industry yes. he did amitabh bachchan and ji. some in the south maybe some uh, south of course yes it. yes but but in the yeah amitabh i don't bachchan know if any women we regretted joining you know, he did we know kanna ji also went yeah. raj babbar i'm saying there are jaya bachchan jaya bachchan is a good example she's actually she's not an electoral politics she's, she's a, a party, rajya sabha member but she's a party politics she, she speaks she's she's very yeah i love her yeah. she's amazing she's and she's a brilliant actress and she actually has a tremendous body of work yeah. and i think that yeah. we don't talk remember about that we don't remember that enough yeah some might ask as i'm sure your trolls did why rahul gandhi you obviously indicated a political preference there i like rahul gandhi i i i like and i like him more and more um in the last i would say since 2017 18 because i think that uh he has to me today in contemporary india he is the only politician who is speaking about the most uncomfortable truths of our polity and our society and he stands his ground i mean that man he has if there's anybody who's been more viciously trolled and abused than me i would say it's rahul gandhi mm. and i think that he has stood his ground despite all of it he has not um 
I mean, I'm sure as a politician, he makes his um, and his team. I'm sure they have to, you know, make those adjustments. You have to do it in politics. But I think at the core of it, he's been talking about people's issues. He's been talking about the fabric of this nation. He's been talking about constitutional principles since 2017, 2018, and he has not budged from that. And I, uh, I mean, not that I know him very well, but I've met him about maybe three times at and in a way where I've spoken to him mm-hmm. at length and I have always admired the fact that it feels like he is a man whose politics is genuinely about you know including as many people as possible he's inclusive and and he it, he really does. It feels like his heart is in the right place. I I like his communication in terms of, you know, what he's saying. And uh, he's fearless. He's, he pays the price for it seemingly very, you know, like... Uh, but, 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 kind of, but before the Bharat Jodo Yatra, uh, where I think Yogendra Yadav had an interesting way to describe it, he said, Rahul Gandhi has finally earned his inheritance. So before the Bharat Jodo Yatra, uh, it could be said that Rahul Gandhi was a part-time politician. There was a lot of speculation on his going away on Shutti every now and then. There was entitlement. There was dynasty. There is a whole history of the Congress party that is not you know, a, not bathed in milk and honey. There is the emergency. So we can't also act as if Rahul Gandhi, is, you know, comes from an angelic well, the uh, thing source is, of context. No, I don't think, I I mean, I don't, I I, I think that as a student of, uh, you know, critical studies and, and literature, I, I it can't be a reduction. I don't believe yeah. in hero worship at yeah. all. Everyone is a human being, including Mahatma Gandhi. I mean, everybody will have uncomfortable sort of sure. things in their life and personality. But I do feel like it's not fair to blame Rahul Gandhi for the emergency. No, I mean, of I, course, I, the Congress. I, I, no, you're not saying that. But I'm just saying like there is a whole narrative. I mean, look, of course, Rahul Gandhi was born into privilege and entitlement. Nobody denies it, least of all him himself or even Priyanka Gandhi for that matter. I don't think they ever try to deny that privilege. But I, you know, I don't, I, I never bought that whole narrative uh, around Rahul Gandhi about that entitlement being a Shehzada and Papu and everything I followed from it because it felt disingenuous because it felt to me like he was being discredited even before anything began in that sense. And it felt like an, a negative advertising campaign. Mm. I think that we are a feudal society. Mm. Everyone benefits if they are born in privilege. I know I have. Of course. As a person who Anyone is, who has privilege benefits. As a person who was born in the upper middle classes and, and more importantly in the English educated, generationally English educated classes, I have no right to pretend like uh, Rahul Gandhi has privilege, but I don't. So I, I think what is more important than the accident of your birth is how you use that privilege. And to me, I think Rahul Gandhi is using his privilege, at least now in the last few years, in so, the best way possible so, for him. So let me ask you as again, a politician. Let me ask you again. Given that art is political, the personal is the political, all of that, would you consider a formal association with a political party? And would that party be the Congress? In today's landscape? Well, I, I don't I, I think I definitely at this moment I mean I think there are a lot of parties who at this moment for me I think that the thing that's the biggest danger that's facing India is majoritarian hate. So to me, any party that is taking a stand against that is someone whose work I would like to encourage. So whether it's the Congress in a national way, whether it's the Samajwadi Party in where or in the places where they are active, whether it's the RJD where they are active, it's I think that people should be encouraged politicians especially should be encouraged because literally it's the single greatest danger that's facing if, india in every sense would you contest so, the election i'm tra- i'm asking you this again because i'm i saying, genuinely don't know barkha which means you know I, you're not saying no i'm but also pregnant yeah. i'm also pregnant I don't so mean now I, in this instance no but like eventually in my life yes maybe 100% but i don't know like what 2029 yeah. is going to look like I mean, uh, do you know? Do you feel fully certain? I, I, I don't even know what, what the next year, is, next month is going to look like. Let's talk about marriage. 
this marriage happened suddenly for those who didn't know you did it happen suddenly it happened you? suddenly for us as well <laughs> well in the sense we obviously knew each other for uh, for 3 you years for her than i like you know i live yes. up to all my stereotypes I mean, that's the thing about me thing. i give them all the yeah. fodder i really yeah, do that's why your trolls love I, you they right? love me yeah, yeah. i can't help it huh. i i feed them it's true uh, we did we met at a cnrc protest actually the first big one that happened in bombay on 19th december uh, yeah in azad maidan and fahad was one of the organizers and he someone had given him my number he called me and uh, what's whatsapp me and normally i'm terrible with these things but yeah. at that time it was everyone was yeah. feeling very like charged and like kind of committed to the yeah. cause mm-hmm. and so in a rare a sort of thing i responded to the message in time and uh, we met and it was crazy because i had arrived there alone uh, there was like 1 lakh people there i had i was on the other side of the ground the stage is on the far end nobody could hear each other and i was trying and i had only had fahad's contact and finally when i wound my way to the stage and found him he was fixing a mic and he just turned around and he was like ha huh, swara uh, bologe na bologe na bolna hai bolna hai and that he didn't say hi how are you oh, thanks nothing yeah. he was just like ha bolna hai ha bolna hai he was damn harris he was saying very horrible yellow t-shirt <laughs> and uh, the, so that was it that was my first meeting and then we of course stayed in touch we met over all the protests and our first few um all our interactions were actually very um around going for protests organizing them we organized a cultural thing called india my valentine together along with some other friends aditi and other people like a whole team and that's when we actually became really good friends and i think that the first thing that i noticed about him was that he's he's a really reliable guy like i remember we were doing chanda like we were collecting yeah, yeah, yeah. for for india my valentine and the everyone had made very tall claims and the only person w- uh, who was able to get actually chanda not corporate money and the yeah, money yeah, we raised yeah. from corporates that's yeah. different but chanda money was fahad and i don't know how but he had raised 50000 rupees and he brought it and he gave it to me and he was and he's you know he's a very candid person and from, and then he was like yaar out of that no 6000 is like my expenses so can you just give me 6000 back and i was just really disarmed yeah. i mean he's very disarming like that candor and uh, i think you don't see it a lot in and so in the show business in the yeah. show business so bilkul so i was very struck by that and and i felt slowly i think i came to start depending on him and trusting him but our initial first two years we only spoke about politics then in 2020 do do we started politics? i i was int- i wanted to ask you this because formal politics and he's with the samajwadi party yeah but formal politics with any party is yeah. an essentially conservative world and by let me explain what i mean one of the reasons that you know in back in the day if people would say would you ever be a polit would you ever join politics and i would say no and the reason for my no was that you are required to suppress your individualism to be part of a larger structure which i don't know how to do also all political parties have to take aggregated positions on issues often yeah. because it's practical because thoda ye zyada karoge to ye hoga and there's all of that so how similar are your politics i think in principles and in terms of values quite similar and i think that that's what actually we discovered in like yeah. we used to have long conversations like every time every time something horrible happened in india we'd i'd call him or he'd call me and then we'd have this like long two hour conversation yeah. or he'd come over and like we have you know we'd like mourn together or discuss it and uh, so on i think in principles and in values is very similar but of course he's in politics he's mm-hmm. trying to stand for elections yeah. and like whenever that happens so uh he i think has a lot more restrictions in terms of how he has to operate what he can say exactly. what he can actually uh, i'm sure that there are there times when he tempers what he says um i understand that i mean i i think that actors and politicians are actually very similar because they both have, have to, to calibrate they have to calibrate they have a public yeah. image and yeah. they have to make sure the public likes them this is something you actually said once at you said that it's as a journalist it's not your job to be liked and i was sitting in the audience because i was speaking yeah. after you and i was like but as an actor my job is to be liked and look at what i'm doing with that no no but by the way journalists are also obsessed with being liked and no. i just keep saying that's the that's, trap yeah. that is the trap yeah cuz that's when you start modulating to be accepted by this or that camp right right correct but he hang on you see as an actor your job is to be liked so when the trolls come for you uh, as a I, star I, your job is to be liked and as someone who has my fair share of trolling i don't take trolls that seriously as other people do but i'm trying to understand when they come for you have you ever thought 
कि यार मैं ये नहीं बोलती ये बोल देती हूँ मे बी दे लाइक मी बेटर देन आई मीन आई एम श्योर दैट आई लाइक देर टाइम जो आई लाइक वट इज द पॉइंट ऑफ सेंग लाइक वट्स द पॉइंट ऑफ गेरिंग टू इट आई नाउ आई जस्ट फील एग्जॉस्टेड आई एम जस्ट लाइक अब इज बिन गोइंग नाइन ईयर्स आई मीन फॉर मी इट स्टार्ट लिटरली इन टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन बट विद यू इट्स नॉट ओनली ऑन योर पोलिटिकल पोजिशन राइट इट्स ऑल्सो इफ यू डू अस्टेशन सीन इन अवी इट्स इफ यू से यूर डेटिंग Why do you think that is? But because I feel like you know, toxic masculinity and right-wing politics go hand in hand, so uh, they're like natural bedmates. So you will find that most people who are very avowedly right-wing in their opinions will also probably not be the greatest feminist liberators. They they will probably be pretty although, toxic although in their understanding of gender. Although although liberal liberal spaces from America to India, from Harvey Weinstein to here at Tarun Tejpal, have you know you've had yeah. you've had politically 100%. liberal public figures hundred percent being accused of terrible crimes against women hundred percent. But I do I I don't know that that's. personal abuse of of power and like you know personal level of corruption i don't think that anyone who believes in progressive politics can actually at an ideological level also be okay with a very masculine patriarchal kind of thought process i i don't know how you'd balance that because you know the 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 this is what i always say that people are always like oh it's just two opinions and it's just two different kind i'm like no it is not the right wing everywhere in the world is fighting to preserve privilege and is fighting to preserve structures of hierarchy where they benefit mm. progressives everywhere in the world fight for change fight for equality But so also there is their own difference. lives don't reflect that 100% i'm thinking of for course. example today of how we would look and you know i don't know if you watch this series called impeachment but if you have no, no, watched it i'm only watching cartoons right now so my child doesn't but is not born in rage like his mother like uh, or her mother but uh, yeah he's a uh, he she they them he she they them very politically correct okay <laughs> but please watch impeachment because it is a series by monica lewinsky monica lewinsky has produced a fictionalized series on her own life oh oh right? i watched that you have must watch it and and you look at it today and you say okay today the way we would look at a bill clinton yeah it's and totally fair in the white house with a young intern yeah, yeah, is yeah. totally different from how we would have understood or that how affair. people saw it then and look at and what the she discourse looked then through, right yeah. and he was he was a champion of feminist causes yeah. you know gloria steinem and everybody like the, it's so, so i'm just saying that life is complicated right there are individuals 100%. who do not actually live the politics that their parties their governments may claim to espouse 100% so my question is this we've spoken about politics what about the politics the personal politics of cinema of the movie industry you said you had to learn and your mother helped you embrace the more vain side of what you do what about politics of representation what about you know being constantly looked at through a gaze which is very difficult for even very enlightened women to know whether you're being objectified or not i think that the best way to ensure representation uh not just on camera but in terms of the narrative in terms yeah. of the stories that are being yeah. told in terms of the choices that are being made in terms of casting in terms of everything is to get more that is to get diversity behind the camera mm. Th- to start with that yeah. and we've actually seen that at least in in the hindi film industry i can tell you as i know it the more women started taking roles behind cameras and i'm not just saying the odd one or two women but like in general as a trend the more female directors female writers female lyricists uh a female dops crew technicians you have the the more your cinema is changing i mean if you look at the kind of cinema that zoya makes or reema makes or uh uh you know konkana now i think one of our most brilliant mm. uh directors in general not women or men uh you see more complex narratives emerging equally the more women writers you have i mean i don't think a man would have been able to write piku a film like piku that is so much a woman telling that story um the more lyricists you have i mean if you look at the kind of item numbers kosar munir writes yeah there's still item numbers but you know that that's a woman uh you know writing it over there so even though there's desire even though there's uh, that little titillation but there's a certain objectification that's and, missing mm. even if there's irreverence but there's an there's an objectification or a sleaziness that might be missing mm. and so i always feel that the best way to ensure representation is to get more people behind the camera and when you get more people more diversity behind the camera you will start seeing diversity on screen 
and uh, and i think it's happening everywhere in the world and the reason it's happening is and i just want to make a case for myself is because because of social media you are hearing more people speak about what they actually feel about what they're seeing on camera but because of social media you also have a flattened homogenized notion of beauty and glamour you look at instagram so we've always had a pretty flattened notion of beauty and you glamour think? 100% i mean that's not social media that's all the magazines and yeah. the glamour industry in general i mean yeah. of course i mean there's always been ideas of beauty in every generation that were mm-hmm. you know the, the dominant ideas i feel like social media actually gives people I mean there's good and bad both yeah, sides yeah. but definitely largely speaking more voices that are different can be heard. I mean look at the number of now body positive influencers which is of course like new trend now body positive influencers or influencers who are LGBTQ um, IA plus or you know and the whole trans uh, yeah. kind of representation debate. I mean so much of that is because social media made it possible for people to actually express it's, who they were it's, it's nice to hear chat with social media given what you go through on it i mean i always say that i mean yes i am abused and cyber sexually harassed every day but i will also say that i have made some genuine uh, connections friends, connections yeah. and found real solidarity because of so- social media yeah yeah it's a double edge it's a double edge sword have you been through any of that any of that struggle with body look I mean all oh, of us you just remain no see look we all grew up and were groomed in that like you know you went to DU I went to DU we we, we were socialized very differently yeah. right and then we were in this world where a lot of the things we thought we would be we didn't end up being we made little changes in the rudder right yeah so I ask this because sometimes the people who struggled with eating disorders or hating their bodies really surprise me sometimes it's the most unexpected person who will tell you you know what for this phase i was bully maker i'm like what you and they'll say yeah me so i'm just wondering that did you f- find yourself going from this you know middle class upper middle class delhi home academics and military suddenly in this bombay world of glamour and vanity did you ever struggle to beyond the minor struggles fit in um i i think my i mean I definitely once i went to bombay i mean my, first my big struggle was to be okay with wearing makeup and looking glamorous and getting a facial and get i, I got my eyebrows done after i went to bombay or like you know yeah, my first story that you were in the back of an auto and, and crying, crying about yeah and my first facial after Why i went to crying? bombay because i was like see what's happened to me i was that girl you know that girl sitting in the back and being all like oh you know makeup and like this yeah. dissing people yeah, who wore makeup yeah. and now i'm them but see that's the amazing thing about bombay bombay is like one tight slap of real and it like you know it humbles all your attitude yeah. your arrogance yeah. and all the chips on your shoulder get yeah. smoothed out yeah. so this is a wonderful equalizing effect because you know in some sense everybody is a nobody unless you're actually born in that world which i was not at all yeah. um i definitely had to diet and was always trying to lose weight and like you know look that that body that completely unreal body <laughs> or image of curvy yeah. uh, breasts and uh, ass but like really thin waist and all that and but you know the thing with me i always feel that my my core personality is such a jhalli and is such a you know i get saved by my own jhallapan yeah. which is that i love food and yeah, i same, i was like same. i can't not eat like yeah. i just there was never i mean i'm never i hate to say this i got thro- i must be the only actor who's been expelled by the dietitian <laughs> I, a dietitian has actually What told me mean? aap jaiye <laughs> she said i don't think i think you are quite comfortable in your body and i don't think you really want to change it so aap kyu aa rahe ho aap she said aap chhod do so i have been expelled by a dietitian i have never kept a diet but now when i look back it is definitely a toxic kind of place because now when i look at those pictures now when i'm genuinely pregnant and yeah, large and yeah. whatever and i'm like i was so skinny yeah. now everyone was still seeing, feeling and i was still feeling like jim jao and ye karo and i was like now i look at yeah. it i was like i was skinny yeah. so you know of course we all you know you, i i always say that one has to be humble about the fact that we are all affected by the various trends of our time yeah. there is no there escaping there is no escaping the conditioning yeah, yeah. of the world you live in and i have seen this most in my process of falling in love with fahad and you know deciding you, you, you to think be that's with him. also a kind of conditioning no, political conditioning no i i actually like you know sometimes we joke with each other that every every cat social category and social sort of um, boundary we kind of crossed in this union except i mean the only thing is that neither of us is gay or trans you like that's the only religion. thing that left religion 
language class why, why language class. why language i mean he i i come from an english speaking background yeah. he comes from a hindi speaking urdu speaking background we have very different lives so religion caste class language ethnicity you know social cultural capital like everything like you name it we we came from different okay. worlds but of course we similar in terms of education and politics so you know there is yeah. so much to be said about the fact that education liberates you but when when we started uh, we were friends for 3 years but when when i started like it just internally i had so much struggle acknowledging that i'm falling in love with this boy or that i'm uh, attracted to him or that there's something happening because i was just nobody said anything to me my family was insanely supportive finally when they found out but i had so much fear about what people will say and you know how it will seem and it'll be like oh you know like she's just like so and i just i was like people will think i'm desperate and he's younger than me by the way age also mm. and i was like people will just say that oh it's this actress who's now you know kind of in a place in her career where she's like you know a little bit giving up stuck on her career and giving up on her career and just finding a young man and grabbing him and and i spent so much time thinking what my parents will say what my brother will say what my friends will say what our social circles will say what a and i never thought i was that person who would care about what people will say and so i actually had to like but i i didn't deny it so i let it wash over me and then i i really like got into it and i dwelt in it and i was like what matters to you finally like you know it's that moment and then of course none of that actually matters right yeah. but it did make me realize because we are all conditioned more than we know it did make me realize that you know everything you think you're fighting outside yeah. lives in you as well and it was so humbling and i always say this to fahad that you know like i feel like i i came into this after like a whole journey and i'm sure it was the same for him differently yeah. like i don't know i i can't speak for him but so so yeah so i i i always feel like i'm very humble about this you know i never try i don't like to act like oh i'm you know i i don't believe in this kind of you know narratives of heroism that are spun and i know that we yeah. live in a time when we're looking for heroes and we always but i always you know i always feel very as you said about something else that you know human beings are ultimately very fragile yeah they're very contradictory and they are very prone to making mistakes yeah, yeah. and bad decisions and we should always remember that and each one of us i mean every one of us is yeah. exempt from that tell me about kangana what about kangana no, and i mean i didn't pause dramatically so you could have dramatically <laughs> and then give up <laughs> no um it's she's an interesting paradox actually i thought of her because we were talking about this paradox uh, to me she's an interesting paradox she's an interesting paradox because she came in from the outside she had a tough life making her entry into the film industry and i know that you and she have you know squabbled in a in a public sort of way about being outsiders being insiders and there's much you probably disagree with every single thing she says today politically but what would you say to her if you kind of met her randomly on the road nothing hi if i look at her if we make eye contact otherwise nothing but do you see her as a kind of paradox i i'll tell you why i'm asking about her i'm asking about her because one you mentioned this contradiction and i started thinking okay there can be people really self made and then they can still internalize a lot of status quoist a lot of self made people are extremely obnoxious and unbearable because they feel that their struggles and their hardship gives them the right to be uh awful to everyone else mm. because i think that and i'm not talking about kangana uh in particular mm. necessarily but i'm saying that i've noticed this in a lot of people who claim to be self made yeah. and then when they are in a position of power and success mm. it's that urge to take your revenge on everyone and um uh, so i again for me you know this is what i always say that you know this idea that those who are born in privilege are necessarily all terrible and those who are not born in privilege are necessarily all wonderful people so that's not strokes, life it that's not life no i brought it up like, because everybody sort of you know sort of cackled from the side as both of you went for each other on twitter well i out. mean i no i don't know i never go for anyone but i it just it i mean it was covid i was bored she was provoking it just felt like too good an opportunity to kind of not also say i mean you know how how can you claim how can you claim to be fighting against stereotypes uh and uh you know privilege of entitlement of people 
and then using terms like B grade or C grade, which is what she for used for, for. I mean, just for context uh, for our audience, she called you a B grade. Me and Tapsi. Yeah, you and Tapsi, yes. Kind of flattering that she remembered us in a whole host of. Do you have friends names. in the industry? Yeah, so I mean, quite actor, a few actor friends. Um, yeah, I do have actor friends, but like I think that all actors are very busy people, so I don't necessarily see them as much. But I stay in touch. I think that amongst the known names, I would say Sonam is uh, is one of my closer friends, and she's been a very good friend. Uh, I think she's been a better friend uh, to me than I've been to her uh, because she's very she's very very uh, particular about you know being in touch and yeah. like she she values her relationships a lot, and she's. you know she's a lovely person and i think that i will i will say that meeting sonam and getting to know sonam actually disabused me a lot of this notion that star children are all horrible people yeah. or that you know because i i think that and i actually also when i met her on the sets of ranjana i was expecting this diva and this, mm-hmm. you know, she's a fashionista and i was like she's going to be you know she's going to be this obnoxious diva and i met her and she was really warm and generous and a lot of our early friendship was because sonam would you know really made an effort yeah and so so which is why i say that you know my experience of life has f- made me realize that you know sometimes like broad stroke generalizations and don't assumptions work. i agree with just you just don't 100%. work you know let's talk in the end about trolling does it impact you mentally like you know we made a lot of jokes about it in this conversation does it impact you mentally 100% what do you feel i mean now of course i have a coping mechanism with it right Which is but it ignore um well yeah i don't really read comments unless i'm feeling like you know like torturing myself but uh or or get into it and then like you know yeah. quote retweet and shame oh, no, them or whatever is... like whatever yeah. but um i i think it's definitely me you know there is now a feeling of being watched and judged constantly in a different way and i'm quite and now because of course after like 9 years of like all this like random you know sometimes i used to there used to be a time when hashtag arrest swara bhaskar was trending and i had no idea why <laughs> like so my friends would be like what did you say and i'm like well, actually i don't know what this one is about <laughs> like i don't know what i said yeah. and sometimes it was some statement that was misquoted yeah. from like 2 3 years yeah. ago and so you know it was now so there's obviously that deep consciousness now in my mind and every time i'm tweeting something especially i mean these days i'm not tweeting a lot because again i'm trying to yeah. I'm, i'm trying that my child should not imbibe all of his yeah. his her mother's sort of you know angst angst, yeah. angst and uh, uh, issues but um i there was a time when i had we had this group called swara social media rant filter and it had my dad it had a common friend uh, someone you know as well prashant jha who was an yeah. old friend of mine and now my brother in law and uh, it had my brother who's also my manager and it had a lawyer and oh, really? uh, because you know there were so many legal notices coming so that like at one point in my tweets we were like hold on let's just get, get like a legal opinion before you tweet anything yeah um so so yeah i did have that uh, this thing and i think that and i remember this that when fahad and i were getting uh, married when we put in our papers at the court. At, at the court for the special marriage act we were both really worried because maharashtra had last year come up with this you know they have a panel to probe love jihad basically interfaith marriages and under the garb of love jihad mm. after the shraddha walkar case and we and then you have to serve a 30 day notice period once you put your papers in right as an intent of marriage and both of us were like somebody made that's public no. that's public information the trolls yeah. are going to pick it up and then you know we didn't know whether they'd put it to this committee and then the, yeah. they'll stall your marriage for 3 4 months 6 yeah. months and we were both very keen to just be done with it like you know करके खत्म करो एंड सो देर वॉज ऑल दैट एंगजाइटी अराउंड आर वेडिंग आर आर होल वेडिंग सोट ऑफ यू नो इवन द फेस्टिविटीज इन ऑल आई थिंक देर वॉज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ सेल्फ कॉन्शियसनेस अबाउट यू नो विल इट गेट आउट वॉट विल पीपल से विल इट बिकॉज यू नॉट ऑल नॉन सेंस लव जिहाद कन्वर्जन नॉट कन्वर्जन ऑल दिस रबिश डिबेट स्टार्ट यू नो लाइक इट्स जस्ट विच इज कम्प्लीटली अननेसेसरी एंड लाइक so i i definitely feel i live a very self conscious life there is a part of me that feels like i'm constantly being watched especially if you're you know the parts of you that interacts with the public yeah i i know that everything that i say in front of a camera is going to surface some day or the other 
somewhere. I know that every message that you're typing, everything you're saying on social media is being archived. So you, there is a sense of being, can be under surveillance, like a different, and I'm sure that produces its own weird psychology. I'm mm. sure I have it. I must be a little bit mm. mad. Uh, but uh, bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm, I'm quite, I, I try to keep the balance and I try to be as self-aware as possible. And I, I think I'm very lucky in family, friends, now husband, yeah. brother, extended family, because I think that I, I have a lot of, you know, really solid support system that keeps me safe and sane. Well, for the next few months, you've got to focus on... I mean, it's very hard. It I'm is, really right? trying to like think happy thoughts and all yeah. my thoughts are like rage, yes. fantasies. Yes. And they, every time I open Twitter and you know, I have to, I have to unfollow all these well, news Elon, channels. Elon Musk has done you a favor by limiting the number of He has, you can see. but I'm trying to stay off because I follow all these news channels and then there's always something horrendous happening in the world. So now I'm only watching rom-coms that I've already seen because I know the endings are happy. And I'm watching <laughs> cartoons so that... My child is going to feel be born into an atmosphere of happiness and hope. So no, there's always happiness and hope. Thank you, Swara. Thank and all you. All the best. Thank, Thank you. you.